So I just picked up the Sony ZV-E1 and I have had a ton of fun creating with this camera. I have done some incredible tests and all of those tests have turned out really, really well, especially when you look at the issues around the overheating and the stuff like that. We'll talk all about that stuff, but my findings are in my first impressions video, but this ain't that video. This video, I'm talking about the lenses that I want to pick up to pair with this. I did go ahead and get rid of most of all of my APS-C lenses. Right now we're looking at the ZV-E10, Sony 16 millimeter F2.8 lens that usually was just like a, a test lens that I had it was really beat up and honestly when you pair these two together all I'm saying is if Sony updated this lens oh I like I'm planning to use this one a whole lot more with this camera these niggas but I already bought a full frame lens first one on the docket Tamron 20 millimeter f 2.8 lens FYI if you get this lens the 24 millimeter or it's another one that they have f 2.8 trio I did not know that these lenses had some issues so if there are similar problems with other lenses that I'm going to talk about in this video it's just an FYI what you have to do is update the firmware because with any of the modern mirrorless cameras this would just like like oh no we're doing manual focus now randomly and so there's no switch on it it just needed a firmware update so if you get one of these which i highly do recommend it's a great budget friendly compact lens so this does not have a usb or anything inside of it so you have to update it via the camera why am i sharing all this because this is a bangarang peter full frame great quality budget friendly lens and i could see anybody picking up some of these primes and adding it to their kit. So I'm looking for other lenses that are very similar to this one that'll work great. And it's not like too heavy, front heavy and all that other stuff. It just will work great. I would love to see a full frame 16 F 2.8 pancake like we have on the APS-C right here, but I digress. So I'm looking to the third party options. They usually do the best job. And right now I'm seeing the Sony actually 40 millimeter F 2.5 lens. It's not third party, but it is part of the trio that I forgot that Sony released. It was like almost a year ago now that is specifically for that reason. People were picking up the A7C. The A7 IV was even lighter than most of their other cameras. Now you got the E1, A7C Mark II. Hopefully it's not too far behind. We want smaller compact lenses that are great. Those lenses fit the bill. So with those lenses now refreshed in my mind, I needed to replace something that would work for my 35 millimeter F 1.8. And yes, any Sony APS-C lenses will work on the full frame camera bodies, but you also have to account for the vignetting and the cropping. You can turn on like dynamic active stabilization in the camera in the ZV-E1 to get rid of all that stuff. I'm finding if you go right up until you almost hit that 1.3 X times crop, like an active stabilization, and then that much for the crop, you'll get rid of most APS-C vignetting on those wider angle lenses. I don't want to have to deal with that all the time because the ZV-E1 will not remember what you had your clear image zoom set to, whether it's a Sony lens or a third party lens. So I just rather get the actual lens and be done with it all. So 40 millimeter fits that focal range, still would be super wide on the full frame camera. And the F2.5 is not bad because honestly, I've been what would it be stepping up the aperture or making it a deeper depth of field. Because when I'm talking about the book, I don't want that to just be an orange blur all the time. Sometimes I want that to be seen. So when you're marketing your own business services, products, whatever, you have maybe your shop in the background or you may have your other clients or your office in the background. You don't want everything to be completely blurry. So F2.5 will be great for the live streams, for client calls, stuff like that. And for the price that you can get that lens, whether it's full price or discounted, it seems to be a pretty good lens. So that's what I'm highly considering for my actual live streaming setup. And it'll stay on that particular thing. And then maybe for B-roll, probably be really good for B-roll. The next one that I want to pick up to go with my brand new ZV-E1, not just this camera, but any other full frame cameras. I'm really looking forward to A7C Mark II now, because if it has some of the stuff that I'm not hearing anybody talk about this in this camera, yes, and please add it to everything and more of that. The next one is going to be the Viltrox 35 millimeter F 1.8 lens. Right now it's about 380 bucks. That is a steal. Again, I'm trying to test and see 
when it comes to the auto focusing motors for these different brands most of these that use the e-mount they're doing a really good job and viltrox has stepped up their game like nobody's business i think they're trying to be on that tamron that sigma level of trust when it comes to third parties people were always concerned about the is it Meka or mikey brand viltrox sam yang rokinon is a little bit better in people's minds but they're the same brand but I think they want to be like, Viltrox is up there with Tamron and Sigma and with the lenses they've been dropping, that's it. So like I said, it fits in that live streaming B-roll type setup and just really that static shot. I'm not into any kind of photography stuff, but you know, if you want to get into that, those will be cool for that as well. So I hear. The next one that comes on my list again is from Viltrox, it's, but this time it's the 16 millimeter F1.8 lens. This lens really makes all third parties have to pay attention to Viltrox. The fact that they added buttons on it so that you can specifically dial in where you want the focusing throw to be, like I say on me, and then let's say you hit John Coltrane and then back to myself, it can be auto program. I can see this being great for like churches, nonprofits, events, where you want to go from the speaker table to maybe the main speaker or Q&A and something like that. That would be so dope. That's the kind of stuff I'm thinking about. And the price comes in way cheaper than some of the Sony offerings. So if I'm replacing like my Sigma 16 so that I can have a wide angle version, that's full frame. Don't have to worry about any crop stuff unless I want to. That lens makes the Sony not as appealing as it once was because they're not the only one at the ball game. Now, yeah, that's pretty close to my 20 millimeter F 2.8 right here. But again, the buttons that are on there, I'm thinking about stuff like that especially if you hand your camera off to somebody. Give it to your friend, you say, hey, when this person's speaking, go ahead and click on them and blah, blah, blah. Amazing, just, it's the little stuff. Yeah, you could tap the focus for sure on your camera, but already having that preset, like the mind wonders. The price though too, to get that extra, it just, I think it's gonna put some of these other lenses from these other brands on notice. You got a, a new bona fide player in the game. So that's another one that I'm considering. Now for an APS-C lens, I have been thinking nonstop about the Tamron 11-20 f2.8. That is an APS-C lens, but that lens would kind of be for vlogging. But what I'm seeing on a 20 millimeter is this is fairly wide. So I've been reconsidering this, but this is one that is like, if I was going to get an APS-C lens, which one would I use? I probably go with 11 to 20 f 2.8. And the reason why I'm not thinking about any of the Sony 16 millimeter f 1.4 zooms like they just came out, even though they're light, they're compact because that's important to me. I'm not going to want an f4. I've dealt with that with the 10 to 18 and I tried the 16 to 70 Zeiss lens that was also an f4. Those are great lenses, not knocking them whatsoever. It's just not what I want. When you go in a hotel room or you're constantly changing environments, the difference between f2.8 and f4 actually is a noticeable difference when you're creating. So because of this, I've been rethinking to go instead to the Sigma 16 to 28 f 2.8 zoom lens and i honestly think of all the different ones i'll probably keep the 20 f 2.8 as my daily driver by tamron probably go with something like the sony 40 or the viltrox 35 because that f 1.8 would be nice I'm not gonna lie it'd be nice and so go that route pick up the sigma 16 28 f 2.8 zoom lens for anything else with the ibis in the camber the active stabilization even once you turn on dynamic active stabilization the crop is not so bad as you would think coming from the land of APS-C. And so Doc and I were having a conversation and he mentioned like, you forget how wide, wide angle lenses really are at 16 and 20 millimeters because we've been on APS-C for so long. It's like, dang, it's like, yeah, you do forget. So this now makes me think about a ton of other lenses, not just these that I mentioned, that are out there that are compact, small, sharp, whether that be a zoom lens, it's like another one would be the Sigma 28 to 75 f 2.8. And also I'm kind of turned off now. I had to do the firmware update for this one to fix the issue firmware issue with the autofocus motor since i did that today zero issues and you'll see that across other videos as i'm using this pair but i don't want to have to do that for every lens can it already come updated and so i can just unpack it and go for the gold but needless to say i digress so let me know if you are using full frame lenses with your setup what lenses are you leaning to granted Tamron 17 to 28, Bangarang Peter Lens to 28 to 75, a chef's kiss. But I'm also looking at weight. Again, size, is it lightweight? And is the price decent? Because some of these G Master lenses, <sighs> mm -mm. but 
hey, whatever floats your boat, it just won't do for me. They're nice, I've used them, they're fantastic. I don't wanna carry all that. Small, light, compact. What lenses are you using that you found a lot of joy uh, with using? For me, first one off the rip, Tamron 20 millimeter f2.8. And we'll see, like I said, based on this lineup I talked about which ones work out, but that's where I'm gonna leave you for this one. Let me know which ones are you looking to pick up, especially maybe let's say the E1's not for you because I get it, it's not for everybody. But if you have the A7 IV, maybe you got the A7S Mark III or something. Even if you're looking to get the A7C Mark II when it comes out, what would you get? Let me know down in the comments with that guy. So with passion, I'll see you on the next video here somewhere on the interwebs. Are you an entrepreneur struggling to get your brand noticed through video content? Look no further. The One Right Video is the ultimate guide to creating videos that will amplify your brand and grow your business. It's jam packed with practical tips and strategies to help entrepreneurs just like you succeed in video content creation and be among the first to get your hands on a copy of The One Right Video. Go to onerightvideo.com.